there guys, Excoundrel here and welcome to my guide on how to team fight in Vainglory. We're going to look at ranged carries first, looking at how you can approach team fights in different ways as a ranged carry. And then we're going to look at uh, both captains and melee um, jungle carries or just melee carries in general in one group. I know there is a lot more to captains and how to team fight and use of items and things like that. We might touch on it at the end, but uh, we'll do that if we get time. Now... There are two main ways to approach a carry uh, as, as, as a ranged carry in a team fight. One is defensive, one is aggressive. It's literally as simple as that. You can either be in a defensive positioning in a team fight, kiting, or you can be aggressive. Uh, and those can be simplified into even more um, basic terms. If you are defensive, you are likely going to hit the first thing in front of you. And if you are offensive, you're likely trying to run at an enemy carry and blow them up. It's actually quite simple when you look at it in that frame of mind. But um, obviously that can be quite difficult to do and difficult to execute depending on the situation. So it's uh, worth keeping in mind that it won't apply to every single situation in a team fight. Now let's take this example here. Let's say you're the Ringo, your team is Alpha and Adagio, that's not a composition that is completely out of this world, and you're going up against a Glaive, a Celeste, and a Catherine. Now, let's look firstly at the defensive manoeuvre that you could take if a teamfight broke out in this situation. You imagine that both Glaive and Catherine are going to try and threaten you, so you want to take a path that is going to be kiting and dealing with that Glaive while trying to maintain as much distance from him as possible so that you can build up A, breaking point stacks, or B, just do enough damage to him so that you can kill him. Ideally, you would kill the Glaive. So ideally, your first point in this team fight would be kiting backwards away from the Glaive, killing him, and then dealing with the rest of the team fight, i.e. going towards the Celeste, backing up your Alpha, or dealing with the Catherine if possible. Uh, now let's reset. That's the defensive maneuver that you could take in this fight. Let's have a look at the aggressive maneuver. Uh, the aggressive maneuver here would be just jumping and running at the Celeste, making sure that you have a reflex block available to stop a stun from Catherine or a reposition from the afterburn from Glaive. And your prime maneuver would be blow the Celeste up as quick as possible. So you would run at her, blow the Celeste up, pretty much ignore everything else, and then if you are alive after that, get as much damage done to the Glaive as possible so that your Alpha or can clean up the rest of the fight. Uh, that is, if Celeste is the biggest threat, it often can be a good way to approach it. Another aggressive maneuver would be if that you're in a position where you can flank, your teammate is uh, about to start the fight, Alpha is going to start fighting in the middle there, you can flank this Celeste and come at her from the side or from the back, and then you just blow her up. That's a very simple maneuver. Your prime directive in this situation would just be blow Celeste up as quickly as possible, and then you collapse on the Alpha and the Catherine afterwards. Pretty simple. That's a really simple breakdown of how you can approach team fights. Let's have a look at this in professional play. Now you can see here, keep your eyes on Bess Chuck NA. He is the Ringo in the top right corner of your screen. I want you to see how he approaches this team fight. Look at him now. Constantly keeping maximum range against his targets. He deals with the first threat, which is the Koshka, and then immediately runs at Hami on that Vox and blows him up. Kept his range, made it very difficult for Koshka to find a good opportunity to get on him, and once Koshka was dealt with, he ran full force at Vox and blew him up. Good way to approach the team fight, kind of defensive. Another look here from the same game. Best Chukane is a little bit more in a precarious situation here. He gets a couple of hits onto the Vox, but then immediately realizes that his issue is going to be this Koshka. He kites back upwards. Look at him at the top there. Kites upwards, deals with the Koshka, and now, with a Hellfire Brew, can finish off the Vox. So he dealt with the Koshka first, and then dealt with the Vox, because that was how he had to approach the situation, because uh, Koshka was such a threat to him. Let's look at a little bit more aggressive maneuvers. This is Hammers versus Rogue. Keep your eye on Ringo starting all over on the sidelines there. No defensive positioning. Super aggressive, deals with the Glaive, and now suddenly pops those boots, runs directly at the Scarf, blows him up, and that is, hey presto, the entire team fight dealt with. Starting all over absolutely decimates the entire team fight with that Ringo there. And again, took no defensive positioning. And now we're going to look at even more aggressive. I want to keep your eyes on old school, on the Lyra here, bottom of your screen. You thought starting all over was aggressive. Look at old school. Goes straight through, misses the verse of judgments. Look at this portal that he's about to pull off to get onto the Kestrel. Straight onto the Kestrel. He jumps in. Bright Bulwark comes down, puts a lot of pressure onto her. And then both him and I love Joseph on the Glaive kill that Kestrel. 
and somehow old school still able to survive and deal with Von C on this petal. That was super aggressive ranged carry positioning, dealing with the major threat of a Kestrel, getting rid of her, and then having to think about the rest of the fight. So, you know, in summary, there are two ways that you approach team fights as a carry. You either go defensive, realizing that the melee threat to you is so big that you can't ignore them, therefore you kite backwards and deal with that melee threat, or the other way is aggressive. You're not too fussed about that melee threat or the captain. Your main issue is that range threat. So you have to just run and damage that range threat as much as possible. And then think about the rest of the team fight afterwards. That is hugely simplifying team fights, guys. But those are two main ways that you approach it. In general, it's very good to kite and be defensive, but obviously there are times where that aggressive maneuver will pay off. Now, there are situations in terms of itemization that you should pay attention to when thinking about your aggressive or defensive maneuvers, and it's ma mainly with the weapon power build paths. If you build a breaking point, it generally favors defensive options. If you build a tornado trigger, it generally favors offensive options. That's because breaking point takes time to stack, and Tornado Trigger has an immediate impact. So ideally, when you build a breaking point, you're going to want to kite. And when you build a Tornado Trigger, you're going to want to either blow up that melee threat or run at the enemy threat and try and blow them up. Obviously, that's not a hard and fast rule, but it's just a small example about how itemization can change how you approach a team fight. Now, let's look at captains and melee carries because a lot of stuff changes uh, depending on how you want to play a fight, if you're playing a melee carry or a captain, you can still play a defensive or aggressive line. Now, that slightly changes because realistically, a lot of vainglory in team fights revolves around a ranged carry, unless you're specifically playing like a double melee carry threat designed to, you know, just completely blow someone up. The, the defensive play for captains and melee carries would to be to peel for your ranged carry. So if you're a glaive, using afterburn to peel for your vox, or using afterburn to peel for your uh, ringo. And when I mean peel, I mean get an enemy threat away from them. The offensive play would be obviously to just dive the enemy carry and kill them. Now here we have our friendly situation once more. Uh, this time, however, you're going to imagine that you are either the glaive or the Catherine. Now, the aggressive move in this play would be to dive the enemy Ringo and take him out immediately, ignoring both the Adagio and Alpha to the best of your ability, unfortunately leaving Celeste by herself. But if you can kill that Ringo quickly, you can then double back and then think about taking out the Alpha once the Ringo is down. So it's kind of a game of who can burst quickest in some of these scenarios. If you're a Glaive, you really want to exploit that early power spike you can get with your weapon power build. So just diving the enemy carry, trying to blow them up, then you just deal with the Alpha. The defensive play would be trying to protect your Celeste from the Alpha and kind of ignoring the Ringo to the best of your ability, or just trying to lock him down with Catherine's Merciless Pursuit or after burn him away. So in this situation, you would double back, do as much as you can to protect the Celeste, deal with the Alpha, and then deal with the Ringo if he oversteps, or then deal with the Ringo once the Alpha is dead. This is a de defensive maneuver that you would take. Now, obviously, there are other things that you should consider. Using abilities to block and interrupt key enemy abilities. I'll show you some professional play. Use of active items like Crucible, very important. Also, you have to know your damage output. How quickly can you burst that enemy carry? If you've got any burst at all, should you be, be defensive because that's what your uh, build entails? And how much damage can the enemy do as well? You always have to take that into account. I mean, there's no point you diving the enemy carry if they're going to burst you quicker than you can burst them. In that case, it might be better for you to build defensively and peel for your carry. Now let's have a look at some professional play to illustrate some of these points, including defensive play, how to block key abilities, and what the pros do in these situations. So take a look here at... Uh, the Lance, Gabe Vizzle. He had an excellent series yesterday in the Vainglory A. In this situation, he locks down starting all over and makes it very easy for his carries to jump onto him. He then protects his carry with a double Githian wall. An old school actually makes out alive in this situation. All set up because Gabe Vizzle was able to combine both aggressive and defensive play in one maneuver. And sticking with Gabe Vizzle, I want to uh, sort of illustrate other awesome parts of his play from this weekend. He goes aggressive here onto the Hammers roster, actually ends up backing out, obviously gets blocked up by the Gauntlet here, but watch how he reacts to a Koshka ultimate. Immediately 
blocks that Koshka ultimate out with a Githian wall. Knocks her out of the stun, allows his carry, old school, to continue to be aggressive, and they end up getting a kill because of that. He was doing that time and time again, so that's one of those abilities that you should be looking to block where possible. This time round, look at Von C on this uh, glaive. He's actually trying to peel for the Adagio, but finds an opportunity to be aggressive with his afterburn and knocks the Vox into the Gift of Fire range, making it very easy then for Bestchuk NA to just burst him down. He then manages to follow up with the aggression and take out Sibs on this Black Feather as well. And again, another nice combo between aggression and defense. Now let's look at this incredible piece of defensive play from Flash X. First of all, note how he lands a Githian wall into a scout trap explosion. Kind of warding off Rogue, they didn't then pull the trigger. He then locks people up long enough for, for Ringo to pretty much freely channel that Hellfire Brew. And obviously you've got to give credit to Best Chuck and A's stutter stepping skills here, as well as the fact that he had an Eve of Harvest for the sustain. But Flash X landing some great Githian walls bought Best Chuck and A time to land those basic attacks. It was really impressive. Now let's look at a fight that actually is from the background footage that I had going Going for this video but it kind of ended up being a team fight situation so it was a good place to know i'm atlas pauldron at this point so there's not much point in me attacking at all i just run and try and escape the rona and the arden combo as best i can at this point i land a really good silence onto the rona meaning that she can't red mist as soon as she tries to jump on me we end up getting kills from the back of this because i essentially kited so much that sky got all of that work done while they were so busy trying to chase me and that's one of the uh, the tactics that you can make work for you if you are being the target and they are so focused on you but you have a good damage threat coming from the jungle or a good damage threat coming from the lane if you are the jungler it is sometimes a, a good way to uh, basically buy yourself a win in a team fight by just running as as much as you can I, there was no point me attacking there because the atlas polders meant that my attack animation was going to be so slow that i'd probably die so i just ran for it used my sonic zoom to get out of there and when i atlas polders wore off and rona tried to jump in on me i landed the silence and then started to do some damage back onto them as they ran at us Finally, I'm just going to have a quick browse over two items and how to use them effectively in team fights for you captain mains. First is Fountain. Now, if you've got squishy heroes in your team or you're going up against Burst like Koshka, it's good to use Fountain at 50% HP. It means you can uh, stop them from getting Burst down from that value. Obviously, if you're against uh, damage over time heroes that don't have that Burst or you have tanky heroes in your team, try and use it at a lower HP value because... Uh, it's more effective that way and obviously use it for before you die there's no point having an unused fountain in a team fight it will come off cooldown by the next time you want to team fight next is crucible really important against the likes of fear nadagio catherine lance anybody with lots of cc Firstly, you want to use it to prevent team-wide CC, like Finn's ultimate or Adagio's ultimate. Secondly, you want to use it to protect a single carry from single target CC, like Lance's Impale or Koshka ultimate. And you also want to use it to shield your allies from splash damage. Remember, you get the reflex block shield across your entire team, so against dual ultimate, it can kind of save people's life. And finally, again, use it before you bloody die. Well, that's this video wrapped up. Um, obviously, this is going to be a little bit shorter than most of my other videos. I didn't want to drag this on forever. And obviously, I don't want to talk about the items forever because that can be a video in its own right. But thank you very much for watching. Hope it helped you guys understand team fighting a little bit better, even if it was just a basic explanation. And I'll be back with another video this week as well. So thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And I will see you all very soon.